Whether you're using Chrome, Firefox, Edge, etc., your browser is free. But that wasn't always the case. Internet Explorer was a pioneer in the late 1990s when they were the first to remove the price tag from their software. Prior to this, one of the best but not free browsers you can use were Netscape priced at $49. And Microsoft was the main go-to software at the time, given by how popular it was. But unfortunately, they failed to participate with the rise of the internet plus its access to its software until 1995. And due to its rising popularity, they added it to its software like Microsoft Office, alongside Bill Gates sending a letter planning out seven different things that can allow Microsoft to conquer the internet. Creating their own servers, client apps, multi-user file and window sharing, internet programming languages, a search engine, optimization to open up more file formats, and extension tools. In simple words, Microsoft mainly needed a web browser, as it currently lacks one, and they're pretty much kind of behind in innovation. And because of that, they've decided to develop, partner with Spyglass, the developer of the very first browser called Mosaic, and release Internet Explorer in 1995 for free as a separate app until 1996 when it became an add-on pre-installed into the system, giving Microsoft an opportunity to boost its browser's market share by 10% in the first year, given by its size, with its competitors starting to decline, only to realize that they would then be later met by an antitrust case by the Department of Justice two years later for being monopolistic, from making users hard to install other browsers, especially that an Intel vice president was told about them pulling it off to extinguish Netscape and cut off its air supply, and even lost the case by defending themselves in a childish way that they are simply better than the competition, and in the same market as Windows, though ended up falsifying their claim by bringing Internet Explorer to the Mac as a default browser a year prior with the audience reaction hating it over the lack of functionality. Also nearly split up into two companies until it was overturned by the conservative Bush administration. But you know, despite all the shit show that had happened over being quite monopolistic, making users' life harder to install other browsers, how did Internet Explorer create browsers like we use today? Well, it all starts from influence. After Microsoft released Internet Explorer for free in 1995, it boosted its market share more than Netscape within the next few years. And from this, other companies like Netscape's successor Mozilla, Apple, Opera, and Google would then see their acts and be influenced to join in the bandwagon and do the same with releasing their own browsers without having users to pay for it, opening doors to find other ways to earn money while being able to have an even larger amount of user base, such as tracking and selling people's data for ads, whether with or without their consent, by paying its partner service fees, creating commercials for their browsers, and making their software open source, allowing browser competition to exist without risks of suppression of future browser innovations and improvements for years to come, and in return also opening doors to even a wider variety of users using it, alongside giving the people freedom of choice on what browser is best for them and for you regardless of what scenario, especially whether you're broke or not.